Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Just a big thanks to everyone that's been tuning in of late and for coming on the journey with me in my series of how to port this set of Australian 302 2V factory cast iron cylinder heads. The cylinder head you can see here on the left is now complete. The video today is going to be me taking you through each step of the porting that I undertook and showing you the differences between the cylinder on the left there that has been ported and the cylinder on the right that is not ported at the moment. And I'll take you through every element of the port and I'll show you what uh, the ported cylinder head looks like now in those elements versus what the unported cylinder head looks like. So then you can get an idea of what you would be in for if you wanted to port a set of these iron cylinder heads yourself, whether it be the Aussie 302 2V cylinder heads, or whether it's just a set of Cleveland 2V cylinder heads. They are not night and day apart. There are a set of these on my 393 Australian Cleveland Stroker as we speak that I ported a couple of years ago, not to the extent that I've ported these ones, but still a good port and a good cleanup, which gave me a great boost in performance. They're a great head. There has always been a level of mystique and legend status around the Australian 302 2V cylinder heads. Guys in America, they bought these heads up by the pallet load and shipped over to America for their oval racing and stuff like that. And these heads just ate Chevy heads of the same era for breakfast. They are quite a well-known cylinder head. And when you port them and spend some time porting them, they can really, really uh, reward you uh, in the torque and horsepower department. And when you port these, Okay, you can get some really respectable power out of these. You can be looking at anything between 550, 580 horsepower on the right engine combination. Fairly recently on one of my videos, I had a comment from a gentleman, um, and thanks guys for the comments. It does help my channel, and I do encourage people to comment if you have questions or suggestions about uh, the cylinder head porting. And this particular fellow said, look, how about you uh, get your unported cylinder heads flow tested and your ported cylinder heads flow tested so then you can see if all the work you've done is has made a reasonable amount of difference hey that is a fair comment and i'd be really interested in doing that issue is in my town there nobody has a flow bench okay so what i've done is i've done a little bit of research on the world wide web and i've discovered that yes indeed i could make a do-it-yourself pretty basic flow bench that would indeed give me numbers on these heads. It's not a super technical fancy flow bench, digital flow bench or something. It's pretty basic, uh, based off a shop vacuum cleaner, actually, and a few other little Dan Fangled uh, contraptions that go with it. And I love Dan Fangled contraptions, as you all know. Uh, but yes, it would definitely uh, give us an AB comparison between the unported cylinder head and the ported cylinder head. So I am going to take that on board and I'm going to build a flow bench to test the unported head and then to test the ported head to get the flow figures. Great idea. Keep the comments coming, guys. Let's have a look then at the differences between the ported cylinder head and the unported cylinder head. So before we launch headlong into this little AB comparison, I just need to let you guys know I am feeling a little bit dusty today. And no, no, it's not because of alcoholism. No, no, I'm not addicted to any drug. This comes down to hamburger patties. That's right, hamburger patties. Last night, I made probably the best tasting hamburger patties I've ever made. They were crackers. I got the mints, you know, you mix it with your egg and a bit of breadcrumbs, but I put in chili flakes. I put in special salt, special peppers, spices, all this stuff. They were sensational. I mean, as usual, I ate way more than I should have. And things were going really well until I woke up this morning and absolutely punished my bathroom. The suffering I put my toilet through was next level. So I even had crazy ideas about possibly doing some mad foodie section on my channel and talking about these hamburger patties. But in retrospect, I'm glad I didn't do it before they'd had 24 hours to settle in to the digestive system, because otherwise I probably would have ended up getting sued. Anyway, we digress and moving forward, here is a direct comparison uh, between the combustion chambers we'll look at here first on the cylinder head that I've ported, okay, versus the stock cylinder head. Let's just 
concentrate on these top ones. It's easy for me to, to do this with the camera. And you can see the outline here, guys, of where the head gasket's been sitting on it. And they're pretty much no chamfer whatsoever. And the valves are quite shrouded. And this is the complaints. You hear about the uh, Aussie 302s. They're a great combustion chamber. They're, they're good for a boost in uh, horsepower because of the closed chambers and the compression you can get. But you're losing out on um, flow because of how shrouded they are. So all I've done here is just basically taken a modern cylinder head combustion chamber. For example, um, let's have a look at this image here of a set of aluminium Aeroflow uh, cylinder heads that I was thinking about possibly purchasing. I can get these for a good price through a friend for about, I won't say what I can get them for, but I can get them for quite a good price. So I was tempted actually to buy those and put these on my car, but I've decided that I'm going to stick with my iron, my factory iron. I've done all the work, and I don't think, in all honesty, I'm going to get that much better performance out of those aluminium Aeroflow heads than I'm going to get out of these anyway, because I've ended up getting the combustion chamber shape uh, almost the same as a modern cylinder like that one, like that aluminium cylinder anyway. Sure, that Aeroflow has got the raised exhaust ports. It's got slightly raised intakes. It's been set up. For the better flow and it's it's addressed those issues that were the weakness of of the cleveland two v's four v's in the exhausts so i'm not going to be able to get better flow from these and i would from a modern cylinder head because of those reasons but it's not going to be that much more in my opinion than what it's going to cost me for those heads to what i'm going to get out of these by porting them keep that in mind okay sure this has taken me time to port these but am I going to get a decent amount more torque and horsepower out of those aluminium heads than I would out of these ones I ported for what it's worth that I've got to pay for those aluminium heads? That's what it comes down to. That's going to be an individual thing for me. No, I don't reckon I'll get that much more torque and that much more horsepower out of them than what I'll get out of these with all the port work that I've done with these. Okay, so there's a direct comparison of the combustion chambers. Let's have a look at the intakes, okay? I'll try and um, get light here that's not distracting. Okay, here's the cylinder head I haven't started on. This is the cylinder head that I've ported. These are the intakes. Obviously, the uh, valve guide bosses here on the unported head are really, really large. They're really chunky. And uh, we've thinned and smoothed them right down with the port. <clears throat> That's a little bit better with that light there. So, yes, that's going to make a big difference to flow. Though the intake on these... Uh, with the valve sizing and the three angle cut is pretty good even on the factory but it's going to be much improved just by a deburr which we've done and thinning down those valve bosses in the runners which is the main thing that's happening with the port on these runners the uh, gasket match at the front here I'm hoping that you might be able to see that how it's been tapered in you can see the video I've got for gasket matching for reference compared to well here's the head with the marks, there we go, if I show that. See where I've marked these ones in that video to do the gasket match, the material that has to come out, and it's already been done on this head. I won't talk too much about that. You can watch that video on gasket matching to understand what you need to do to do that. Let's have a look at the bowls. So here's a fairly typical example of the unported bowls, okay, in this Cleveland head. You can see how chunky, the valve guide bosses are, you can see all the casting, all the burrs in the intake there, and you can see that massive step from where the uh, valve seat cutter has gone in to the bowl and then just basically left a big step towards the bottom. Same can be said with the exhaust. And this gives you a bit more of an idea too of uh, the space with the combustion chamber or the little space versus the ported one. Okay, sorry, I'll try and get light. Exhaust uh, bowl has been completely blended 
to the top of the throat or to the bottom of the throat, should I say. You don't go all the way up to the valve seat. That can cause you flow issues. Just to the uh, start of the throat there is where I've blended to on the exhaust port. And of course, thinned the valve guide boss right down. We'll have a look, a closer look at the exhaust ports in a minute. I'll talk more about what needed to be done with them and the intake. Okay, really nicely blended right to the bottom of the throat. All the deburring and smoothing and the valve guide boss is thinned. Let's have a look at the exhaust ports. Quite difficult, guys, to get light when I'm trying to film this. But here's the unported exhaust port. Super, super chunky valve guide boss. Look at the uh, ceiling. The ceiling is really quite high here. This is the short side radius we're looking at here. Okay, you can see the little bump there as well. Looks like a little nail head. It, it, it actually sticks up more than you think. Um, the burring and rough casting in the exhaust ports is also not great. All, all the way around the bowl as well. And the floor is quite rough as well. Some decent sort of burrs there versus what's been ported. Okay. And so... Uh, I spent a lot of time on the exhaust ports. They're important. Really thinning that valve guide boss down to be like a bullet and really cleaning thoroughly the runners and then working on the short side radius. A lot of time on the short side radius, completely smoothing that around, using a lot of caution because we're very close to water. That's why these are so hard and virtually impossible to rectify the way you'd like to because of how thin the castings are around the water jackets in these. The floor, you don't really do much with. It's already quite low in these. You just clean it up. You try and take as much as we can out of the roof around that short side radius, smoothing it, smoothing it right in the corners. And that's all the sort of stuff that was done in that versus what you get in your stock factory casting with these. You can see how that's still quite a lot more prominent lump in the roof and I've tried to flatten that and lay it back and round it around the short side radius with this one well in a nutshell guys that's it for these and um, what I'll say is you know you can fill yourself with a lot of knowledge about any cylinder head because there's so much information out there you can go on forum after forum. There are some knowledgeable people on there, but there's people on there that have obviously done a lot of reading but have never actually put a carbide to metal. You're not going to know really how to port these until you start uh, having a crack at doing it yourself. You can talk about it till the cows come home. You can try and tell people in forums or whatever what needs to be done. But until you actually do it, have a go and do it and uh, learn what you're doing and work out why you do those things, and how it improves flow, you really don't know until you've done it. Well, I hope this video, which has showcased the comparison between an unported Aussie 302 2V factory iron cylinder head versus a ported cylinder head has maybe inspired, maybe uh, given a bit of a push to anyone that was maybe sitting on the fence about porting their factory iron heads. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of information and maybe a bit of encouragement from a guy who is not a professional porter, but with a bit of reading, a little bit of help too, from uh, people who have contributed to the channel. Um, I'm talking about Craig, mainly from uh, Performance 351, uh, helping us sort out how to get a better combustion chamber shape in these heads and stuff like that. With those things and a gathering of that knowledge, you can definitely have a crack at doing this yourself if you have the patience. So on the horizon, guys, is me getting the engine pulled out of my 1969 Ford Falcon XW, getting these heads in that, and continuing on that series on my channel with the restoration of my XW. And I'm really looking forward to working through that. And I'm hoping you guys will be able to join me and support me uh, through that process. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I think there's a few people there that are enjoying uh, seeing how uh, a little bit of the work is done on an old school car like that Aussie built XW that I happen to own. Down the track, guys, too, uh, there's some more exciting stuff. I've been asked by a young guy who is an engine builder here in my town who's starting to get a little bit of a reputation with building 
some high performance uh, engines for his generation. He's a younger guy, a lot younger guy than I am. I actually used to be his uh, guitar teacher back many, many years ago. He's got himself qualified as a mechanic and he's started his own business um, building performance LS engines. He's got a really awesome uh, LS Commodore. He might be sort of pushing around that 800 horsepower. It's a stroked 383 LS with a, with a turbo on it, so it's got a lot of balls. He's gonna dyno that next week. He's gonna give me his set of LS heads for me to port, and then we're gonna dyno that again um, and see uh, what head porting on an LS engine, what you could expect to possibly get out of that, and we'll actually have dyno. Uh, figures on that before and after. So that'll be an exciting series in itself coming up soon. I'm going to do a full interview with Reese. He'll talk about his car. We'll have a look at his build, the stuff he used in his build. Um, and I think it's good to cross over between some of our old school stuff that I love and I'm going to continue to love. Don't worry, I'm not about to LS my Ford. Sacrilege, that sort of thing will send you straight to hell. But I do appreciate the modern stuff as well, you know. And the LS motor, it's you know, it's the Cleveland of today, if you like. Let's be honest. They're 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 a great motor. They're they're easy to work on. They're reasonably budget friendly. And I'm going to be really uh, excited about porting his cylinder head. So that's coming in the future, guys. There'll be that on the channel. There'll be the continual work that I'm doing, as I've said, on my Ford Falcon. And I'm really hoping you guys will keep joining me for that stuff. I'll try and keep it real. And uh, keep being myself, I don't intend to change any of that stuff. Whether you like it or hate it, I couldn't give a rat's ass. It is what it is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much again for tuning in. And until I see you in the next video, whatever that be, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.